Welcome to Mr. Land's U.S. History Flipped Classroom. You're here for the summarized readings on the three major battles of the American Revolution, as well as one battle-related event. On the screen in front of you are the summarized stories. Hopefully you have them in your hands if you're in my class, but if you don't, welcome, stick around, and we're going to do a quick summarized version of each battle so you can learn a little, a little bit. Let's dive in with the first battle of the Revolution, the Battle of Lexington and Concord at Massachusetts. In 1775, British troops were spotted coming into Boston Harbor. Writers Paul Revere and Wentworth Cheswell rode into the night to warn the colonists. The Redcoats were marching to an ammunition supply house near the city of Lexington, Massachusetts, but were cut off by a group of patriotic volunteer soldiers calling themselves Minutemen because they could be ready at a minute's notice. At Lexington, the first shots of the war were fired between the Redcoats and the newly formed Volunteer Militia. The fight was nicknamed the shot heard round the world. The Revolutionary War had begun. The Patriots fought in many unconventional ways, hiding in the forest and behind trees, but the Minutemen suffered a loss at the city of Lexington. The Patriots, though, were able to push back the Redcoats back towards Boston and away from the ammunition supplies. This led them to the town of Concord, where the Minutemen won and conquered the day. The Patriots had defeated the invincible British Army. So that was our first reading. Hopefully you're doing well with your notes in your hand. But let's continue chronologically and get to the second major battle that we'll look at. The Battle of Saratoga in New York. The British had strategically planned to take over New York in hopes of cutting off the New England colonies from the other colonies. The British believed that most of the rebellion from the Americans was coming from these New England colonies, and it might stop these patriots if they could succeed in their plan. General Burgoyne, led the British military, and his strategy included closing in on the Continental Army from three different directions, with three groups meeting in Albany, New York. The plan failed. General Howe, who was supposed to move north from New York City, decided to attack the Patriots in Philadelphia and then camp out there for the winter. In addition, Battling these patriots, headed up by Benedict Arnold, kept the other British forces from making it to Albany from the north. Burgoyne would end up winning the Battle of Freeman's Hill, which was one of two battles leading up to the Battle of Saratoga. General Horatio Gates and Benedict Arnold would lead the patriots to a victory in the second battle at the Battle of Bemis Heights, where many British redcoats would be captured. General Burgoyne and his remaining army were then surrounded by American forces in Saratoga, New York, forcing the British general to surrender. This victory for the Americans in the 1777 Battle of Saratoga is considered a turning point of the war as it boosted the spirits and morale of the Americans and it also convinced France that the Americans were worth fighting for. They became an ally to the Americans and fought on their behalf. So great story here with the turning point of the war, turning in favor of the Patriots. Let's move on to this event, which is not a battle, but a battle-related event. The title, The Winter at Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. During the Second Continental Congress, George Washington was chosen as the Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army. Washington's army was made up of mostly untrained farmers and merchants. In December of 1777 through 1778, Washington's army would set up camp in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. This was a strategically chosen location that sat on high ground and one where Washington could easily keep an eye on the British army close by near Philadelphia, Pennsylvania they would experience a very hard freezing winter with lack of clothing such as adequate shoes and very little food, as well as suffer from diseases like influenza and smallpox. Despite these hardships, the army worked hard to train. Marquis de Lafayette, a French officer working to aid Washington, 
would spend his own money to buy supplies and help strengthen the military. The army left Valley Forge after that winter, a more disciplined, tougher, and better trained fighting force ready to take the fight to the Redcoats. So the Continental Army is now really ready. And the last story we'll look into is the final battle of the American Revolution, titled the Battle of Yorktown in Virginia. The Battle of Yorktown was a joint victory for the Americans and French as they overtook British forces led by General Lord Cornwallis. After Cornwallis had been defeated in the South, his army continued to weaken. His plan was to move his troops north from the Carolinas to Yorktown, Virginia. At the same time, Washington and his troops were closing in from the north. Because of Yorktown's location next to the Atlantic Ocean, Washington and his troops were able to surround the British position. At the same time, French ships were able to surround and attack the British from the sea, while Washington, along with his French forces, were able to attack by land. Cornwallis's military was not fully prepared and he never got reinforcements or relief from the British military. Left with no hope of further assistance from his military, in addition to being outnumbered two to one, Cornwallis had no other choice but to surrender. In October of 1781, the last major battle of the American Revolution ended. The Continental Army had just defeated the greatest British army once and for all. All right, kids, that's the end of the readings. I hope you learned something a little bit here. Stay tuned for more content.